Welcome to the Community Manager's Unmoderated panel. Uh, I am your moderator, Will, T <laughs> Will Tuttle. Uh, and, uh, uh, Will Tuttle, formerly of uh, GameSpy.com. And with me, I've got Ryan Schneider from Insomniac, uh, Nick Brecken from, uh, from Bethesda, Hello. Matt Grandstaff, from, also from Bethesda, Abby Heppy from uh, Respawn, yeah. and the Respawn crew up here in front, and then uh, Adam Pyle from id. Hey, hey. Uh, so I guess we'll kick things off with uh, kind of a basic question. Uh, what drew you guys into community management, um, and how did you actually get into it? Whoever wants to start. Um, I uh, like video games, <laughs> and uh, I, I reviewed video games in college and uh, had a marketing job that, that was looking at uh, stuff for clients like Bioshock and The Darkness. Uh, and living in Washington, D.C., there's not a lot of video game jobs, but... There's Bethesda, and it's 20 minutes away. Uh, they opened up uh, the position right before uh, Fallout 3 got announced. And uh, they needed somebody. They hired me, so it's great. How about you, How about you Abby? Uh, well, I came from press, too. I was at G4 before um, starting to respawn. And uh, <laughs> who else here is from G4? Or respawn. Or respawn. <laughs> um, and so I was doing video game reviews and, and adding up a lot of our conference coverage. And I actually had met some of the team before, and I was sent a message on Xbox Live <laughs> <laughs> saying that the position was open, and I went for it immediately. So, um, uh, we should I, note that Abby was screaming last night at Medieval Times. I was times cheering at Medieval Times. Night. I'm so sorry. And the yeah. World Series of Dance. And the World Series of Dance, yes. <laughs> uh, Ryan, what about you? Uh, you know when I showed up to Insomniac, I was there to uh, run our PR and marketing, but the biggest thing I realized was, as an independent game developer, that we should be the ones taking care of our fans, not our publisher. And there was just a huge opportunity there. So uh, basically, I just formed something out of nothing. And this was back in like early, you know, 2000, uh, I want to say 2004, 2005. And there was really just us and like Bungie from like a console standpoint. And, mm -hmm just kind of making it up as I went along. Nick? Uh, I was working as an editor at Shack News, and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, with, with that guy. And, um, and you know, if, if you're familiar with Shack News, it's a fairly uh, community-based uh, blog. And uh, so it was a pretty natural fit to go into community management. Um, and uh, I really like Bethesda, and this guy hired me. So, <laughs> And what about you, Adam? Uh, my most directly came from uh, my competitive and uh, my um, competitive play that we had from Quake, Quake 1, Quake 2, uh, Quake 3, I was very involved with running clans, getting into tournaments, uh, going to professional tournaments at CPLs in Dallas. Mm. Uh, and through that, uh, we met a lot of friends that did shout casting. Uh, my wife was involved in a uh, professional female clan uh, that was also um, had some shout casters in there in the early days. And then um, beyond that, I ended up running a land center and got really involved kind of in, in that aspect of it. Uh, following that job, what actually ended up landing me a job as a community manager, really I uh, got into web design and hosting, and I applied for a job that was just strictly for web design. It, it, and then they saw my resume that I had been really involved and knew a lot of people in the industry uh, just from my competitiveness, and uh, that kind of led to them asking me to also do community, community management work. So. Um, Ryan, you mentioned that you, uh, that you started uh, at Insomniac doing some PR and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, can you guys talk a little bit about the relationship between uh, the, the public relations and community management, like how the two groups work together, if they know what they're each doing? Um, you know, I know it's probably different at every company, but how is it at Insomniac? Well, at Insomniac, um, where we've evolved too is that, you know, PR really at Sony will take care of like press relations or they'll take care of like uh, the PlayStation blog, for instance, but we take care of our specific fan base. And I think um, over time, there was a real struggle for that. At first, like from the console side of things, um, when I first started, nobody was really sure what to make of us at, at Sony and this whole community thing. And then once they realized, hey, this is pretty powerful stuff, there sort of initially was like a bit of a tug of war. Like, hey, well, is this PR? Is this marketing? And then over time, I think we reached sort of a, a mutual understanding that, hey, you guys take care of your fan base. We'll take care of our fan base. And uh, we won't step on your toes when it comes to like press relations. Let us take care of you know the group that we know best, and that's our fans. So mm -hmm. that's how it's sort of uh, that's sort of the evolution over you know 
past six, seven years or so. How about at uh, Bethesda, where, where PR is in-house? So you guys are basically a publisher and a developer. Yeah. Um, right there. Uh, I mean, my boss is right there, Tracy Thompson. Uh, he's got a cool shirt on that Nick made. Uh, uh, and Pete Hines, who's our VP of uh, marketing and, and PR. And, uh, you know, we're working with them to complement what's going on with the PR stuff. But, you know, we're also in a frontline position where we're able to uh, see what you guys are saying when we're announcing things. Uh, uh, recently, Prey 2 was announced, and a lot of people started saying, well, where the hell is Tommy? Tommy was this main character in Prey. Um, and so, you know, we're able to say, you know what, a lot of people want to know about this, so we should probably do something. And, you know, in the coming weeks, I think we'll have more information on his involvement in the game. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're seeing what's being said by you guys out there. Um, how do you typically deal with um, uh, unannounced games that everybody knows exist? Uh, you know, like, you guys had Skyrim. Uh, I'm sure, Adam, maybe there's a Doom game in the future somewhere. Uh, <laughs> there, there might be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with, how how do you guys typically deal with that? Like, Adam, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that uh, as far as the, just the dealing with the community around that? Uh, well, you know, in general, we, you know, we really avoid talking about anything that's not released, but we do like to talk about the IPs, how strong they are, what we uh, tend to like about each one, and how they favor. And so we, you know, you know, for instance, when people talk about Doom 4, uh, they often will ask a lot of questions about, you know, what its multiplayer will be like, what its single player will be like, will it be much like these earlier titles. And while we can't get into any details about that, we tend to uh, like to talk about the strengths of the IP in general, about uh, what fans are attracted to, and uh, when they're looking for a certain type of gameplay, we can kind of direct them, well, you know, maybe that's more of a, a Quake series type of gameplay that, you know, we might be looking at or considering for a future title there. And uh, we, we kind of let them know that we, we seek to fulfill those needs um, without really going into details about what we have planned. We had an uh, interesting situation uh, about a year, I guess it was a year, year and a half ago, where a billboard uh, from Battle Los Angeles leaked uh, from production. And all along, we were told that um, when, we, when we supplied the assets for it for Resistance 3, uh, that this was supposed to be, we, we were under the impression that it was digital. But it was a big billboard that was in like downtown New Orleans, and they just left it up after filming. So how do you, how do you not acknowledge a game that has a billboard that's out? <laughs> Yeah, that was that was, it was just a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was fan art. So that was that was that was awkward. It doesn't exist until you uh, create the uh, forum topic, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Abby, you're you're kind of in a unique position because uh, you know all the guys up here have um, basically are work for companies that have games. Uh, whereas, uh, <laughs> Thanks, whereas Will. Respawn, nobody well, knows anything about, uh, yeah. you, you know, I mean, I'm sure you guys are working on some game, but, but nobody knows anything about it, uh, yet you already have the strong community around just the brands and the people that work there. Uh, yeah, and it's true. I mean, we can't even do what Adam is doing and talk about, you know, the strength of the brand or franchise that we have not announced yet. So it's a very difficult position, but I think... Um, and the way that we've launched our website and the way that we share information has a lot to do with the studio culture and what it's like to work there. And because I think that's really what makes it a special and great place to work. So we try to show really fun looks, try to take some stuff in a really not, um, like we do interviews with people on the team. Sorry, I'm so sorry about my voice. <laughs> Go Green Knight. <clears throat> I know, right? Um, so we try to do a lot of interviews with people on the team and take looks at, uh, some of the stuff we do outside the studio, and uh, it's, it's fun. It is going to get more challenging, but also I think it's a great way for people to become a part of our community by getting to know the developer. Um, what about, uh, do, do you guys have any particular great stories about uh, just crazy things that people have either said on forums or said to you directly or uh, you know, just, just <laughs> psycho fans, anything like that? Oh my god, I, I wish I could share. <laughs> yeah. But I probably shouldn't. Um, yeah, we get a lot of really weird stuff. It's, it'll get worse. It's not as bad. When I was actually at my first yes, magazine job, somebody sent us this amazingly detailed um, cross-stitch of a Pokemon. <laughs> fully framed. And I don't under, really, we never really understood why, but it smelled like pee. <laughs> <laughs> And we were all terrified of it, but it was, it was done so painstakingly and it was so detailed that we hung it on the office wall. <laughs> 
<laughs> and just never smelled it. The pee wall. Mm. We get, um, we, we have a monthly, we have fans out there who have sent us, uh, like we get like a monthly kind of candy of the month, which we have dubbed Fandy. And it's been, I mean, the first time we got it, we weren't sure what to do with it. And we weren't sure if people were trying to kill us. <laughs> like, so it was sort of like, uh, you know, no, you taste it. No, 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 you taste it. And then, okay, we tried. Okay, it seems legit. I haven't died yet. That's good. Um, uh, I believe that's what interns are for. Right. Yeah. Yes, uh. that's also true. So I guess the, the strangest one we got was we literally got a gigantic bag of mixed nuts. <laughs> so we got a bag of nuts. Like, thank you, fans. It's awesome. So do you eat it now? Like yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, nothing, nobody, nobody's been lost for the count. Mm. So far, so good. So... You know. You're so brave. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're trying. We, we love our fans. <laughs> we'll eat whatever you make. <laughs> Was that, that, that came out wrong. Yeah. <laughs> How has, uh, how has community management uh, changed, um, you know, changed the most over the last few years? Um, you know, I don't know how long each of you guys have been doing it, but, but there have been some changes, you know, as far as like podcasts and things like that. Um, what, what have been some of the biggest changes you guys have seen? Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I, I think there's just more and more interest in, in our games and more and more avenues of where we're going to be, you know, talking to our fans. I think when I started not many people had Facebook accounts. I was still looking at, should we have a MySpace page? And like, you know, now like we're not going to do that. We're not doing Friendster. Um, but you know, now you're at a point where it's like, well, is Google Plus going to take off? And do I need to do something with that? And uh, you know, we're doing the podcast stuff. And you know, a lot of times, Ryan and, and James and your team, you know, we're seeing stuff that you guys do and being one of the first community, uh, you know, like you said, community mm -hmm. console groups. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of stuff you've done, and, we, and we've we've just taken it. That's that's totally okay. I mean, I think that's I think that's what it's all about. It's all about collaboration and learning and growing from each other. And you know, I think the biggest thing I'm seeing like right now is it's measurement, like being able to being able to interact with our fans on a one-to-one -one basis and know, for instance, like, you know, there's this thing called clout. I'm sure you guys have heard of it where like it kind of measures your uh, Facebook and Twitter kind of how much you amplify across the social network, so to speak. And it's interesting to be able to look at that and see, okay, you know, we definitely need to reach to these guys because they have like, they're, they're when they reach out to people, uh, their scores is, is such that, you know, our message is going to get spread that much more. And it's just, it's great that there's uh, more metrics behind what we're doing and be able to kind of uh, just really just uh, expand from a, a marketing and PR standpoint and know that what we're doing actually has a tangible effect is uh, really cool for us. Yeah, it's a lot of instant gratification. Mm -hmm. What are you influential in on clout now? Well, that's the funny part is if somebody if somebody even does a joke post like about like Justin Bieber, like you're instantly influential on Justin Bieber forever, which really sucks because <laughs> I'm not influential on Justin Bieber. If you take one thing away from this, I'm not. Uh, so, but you know, like it's EA, Justin Bieber and like triathlon, I think are my things. And like, <laughs> that's pretty eclectic if you ask me. So that's the downside of clout though, is like, it's still a work in progress, but at least, I mean, even on Facebook now, like being able to click on the page overview button and see like on a, even though there's like a two day lag to be able to see like, wow, we're at 10,000, you know, page views, uh, or, you know, 3000 visits or whatever. And like to see how we're trending and like what happens when you actually have content to share and when you have like beta codes to hang out, uh, to hand out. And it's just like, boom, that curve just goes up. It's nice to be able to, to really feel that and see that instantly, like you're saying. Hmm. Um, you know, speaking of social networks, you know, obviously they've blown up uh, over the last few years and, and they're more important than ever. Um, what sort of strategies do you guys have for, for using social networks? I mean, how do you, um, how do you, in, how do you use those to leverage um, community management? Well, right now, especially um, without a lot to talk about, I'm trying to keep a minimal um, eye on a lot of them because uh, a lot of times uh, these avenues of questions get opened up and you're like, I can't answer that. Oh my God, please don't ask. And I feel bad, like, it's like you're teasing someone. And, um, but I also, I think having a centralized website and Twitter, and this is what I wanted to ask everybody else on the panel, is do you find it's better to be on more of the social networks or to take your message and make people either go to your site for it or use fewer Mm. Um, outlets so that you can centralize your message. Go for it. 
Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it, it's, <laughs> we've, we've definitely tried several different uh, strategies as far as that is concerned. And I don't know. I mean, it's, it's still something that we're, we're looking at, I think, uh, and trying to figure out, too. But um, I'm personally more of a fan of, of, uh, of, of, of fewer avenues. I think, I think it's, it's, it's um, for somebody who's trying to find information about a game, uh, you know, if you have one or two ways that you're getting it out there, it's, it's, it's just it's easier for us to manage, and it's easier for people to, to, uh, to find it as well. Um, and, and, you know, it's also just a matter of, of making sure that you don't leave anybody behind, too. So, like, we have our forums, um, and, you know, it's, it's something that we have to keep reminding ourselves, like, well, if we're going to do something over here, we've got to also make sure that we're not forgetting these guys who are, maybe aren't, you know, on Facebook. And so it's, it's, hard, it's hard to figure it out, but, uh, you know, there are so many social outlets now that you, you almost have to pick and choose at a certain point. Typ um, typically, it would seem that the um, forums might be the most important since those are the people that are actually coming directly to your site and interacting with each other on, on the forums. Um, do you see social networks ever outpacing forums for that, for that sort of stuff, or is it just kind of you know, just another type of thing? I think it's, I think it's different. We've, we've found that like, the people who are you know, particularly boisterous in the forums will also, they will go on to Twitter or Facebook. Whatever, it, it gives them more avenues to reach us and if they're not being hurt, if they don't feel like they're being heard in the forums, then they'll just take the fight to the streets, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, I think that's really one of the challenges of uh, community management is, hey, wait, I, I just answered that question to you specifically like about an hour ago, and now I've got three emails in my inbox, and I've got you on Twitter and Facebook. Like, calm down. Like, we're going to, like, we'll take care of you, I promise. So Yeah, it goes from the forum, then to the respawn Twitter. And then to my Twitter. Yeah. Well, and, and sometimes it goes to cell phones, and that's sort of where I think the line is. Like, we, you know, when you get called, like, hey, um, so what's going on with the beta right now? Um, yeah, it's my cell, and my fiance's on the other line. Can I call you back? Like, <laughs> you know, I think that's really one of the biggest challenges of community management is um, because you make yourself so accessible, uh, and people, our fans are so passionate about our games that, um, you know, it's very, right now it's very hard for the line between personal space and game space uh, mm -hmm. to be separated. Adam, did you have something to say? Well, uh, it seems that we have had a lot more success in certain realms with Facebook than we have on our forum, if you're talking about how it eventually overtaking things. Uh, while we have more posts and more activity on the forum still, we have far more uh, readers on Facebook, and so we get the message out to a lot more people. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, where we have, might have, you know, a few thousand you know, on a given hour on the forum, you know, we can easily get reached out to, you know, 60, 70,000 people pretty quickly in a matter of minutes on Facebook. Mm. And uh, so we, what we find on, on the forum is we, we find a lot more game questions in depth, but uh, when we're trying to get information out, uh, usually the Twitter and, the, Twitter and Facebook is, is much better, and we kind of use Twitter as more of an announcement system still. And sometimes you want to, you know, that's the easy way to go, and you kind of grow, you want to grow beyond just doing that. Um, but, but Twitter has been very useful at, at getting quick announcements out, especially when people are on the go and just need to read a, you know, a short tidbit. Uh, but Facebook has been really successful for us. Hmm. Um, well, you have a, I mean, Id and, and yourself um, have a pretty strong PC background, uh, PC gaming background, obviously. Um, yes. How, uh, how has that changed, you know, with the kind of more outreach to console? Um, you know, obviously it has been embracing console for a little bit, for a while now. Um, but uh, how have you seen changes kind of in that, and, and especially amongst the community? Um, you know, obviously we have the BYOC and stuff here, and the PC gaming is still going strong at QuakeCon. But. Yeah, not much at the, our office has really changed. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot more development that does, you know, bring in game pads during development testing that really just to ensure that the game's you know, working proper for that. Uh, and if it runs smooth on a gamepad, then it's just going to run that much better on a keyboard, usually. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the, the impression that kind of the community gets of how it affects us is uh, kind of, they, they expect a greater change. They, they believe that it's, you know, maybe it has really changed the way we work, and it, and it hasn't. Um, so the consoles, I think, give us more platforms to get out to, mm -hmm. to reach out to. And that's, that's the one benefit that we really have is that um, there are gamers out there and they have their own you know, favorite platforms to play on. And this allows us to, to reach out to everybody. But it doesn't really change our development too much. Um, 
Um, I just totally blanked on my next question. <laughs> um, what do you guys uh, see sort of as the uh, future of community management? Um, you know, obviously it's a little hard to look ahead and, and see stuff, um, you know, beyond social networks and things like that. But uh, where do you see community management going? Is it more um, just direct person-to-person -person contact with 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 um, with readers? We'll be making house things? calls in the future, yeah. uh, <laughs> teleporting right into your yeah. house. Uh, uh, but how, how to you tell you that the PS3 version is fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, well, I mean, one, one of the things that I see, you know, I played a lot of games is, uh, and I don't know if this is something that's going to come up in one of our games soon or not, or not, but, you know, you look at Little Big Planet, something like that, where the community is built into the game. You're creating new content, and that has its own peer review and everything like that. Like, I'd love to see more games doing stuff like that. Yeah, with, Quake, with Quake Live, the community is our game. Uh, you know, everything's driven by activity of the community with the profiles, with their stats. Um, basically, the way we handle community management for that project is that the information we get from the community is really just a direct kind of uh, tie into what the developers are currently working on. So rather than uh, it being more of a, like a PR stance where we're trying to get information out, we're usually trying to listen and bring everything in so we know where to take, mm. you know, the next steps. because. We just work on an iterative process where we're constantly changing, constantly improving, and uh, a lot of those decisions are just made by, by the feedback we receive. At what point in the uh, development process uh, does community management typically come in? I mean, are you guys there from the start, typically? Like, do you, do you always know what's going on in all the developer, uh, development departments, or are you, do you more come in later? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely are involved from the very beginning. Uh, our team, we try to conduct research uh, immediately after the game has been released initially. Uh, what's working, what's not, what lessons can we learn uh, to take to the sequel? Uh, you know, we're, we're involved in the pre-production. Uh, we're basically, like, we, we try to, we think of ourselves as in-house marketing, even though we have a publisher that we work with as well. So that means that we're doing a lot of our own research and we're talking to the community and passing that back to production. Our feeling is we can be faster than waiting for that market research that takes like two to three weeks, if not longer, to compile and bring back. So, I mean, as everybody here knows, like, community doesn't work that way. Like, that, that's ancient history. So we just try to be uh, a little more, uh, you know, quick boots on the ground. Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah. we're involved pretty early on on projects. Uh, we're, we're seeing what's happening with projects years in advance. So, uh, you know, we can provide our feedback based on the feedback we get from you guys um, and, and, you know, make sure that the games we're making are the games you guys want to play. Uh, how do you typically deal with angry fans? <laughs> you know, I'm sure every so often you get somebody who's really pissed off in the forums or... or on Facebook or on We Twitter haven't even done anything and people get mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, do you basically just try to diffuse the situation <laughs> generally or, or do you ever lash out? Is there ever, ever any, you know, shut your mouth? <laughs> I, I try as, as much as possible never to get pissed off at someone, you know, because I don't know who's on the other end of that. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where I'm going to assume that it's somebody that, you know, goes online and, and thinks they can say whatever they want to say yeah. because... You know, it's this anonymous posting, but uh, uh, you, you get some weird stuff. Um, I've gotten a few death threats, um, mm. but, uh, you know, it happens, and, and you just roll with it. You know, you know how it's going to be, so. Is that how you know you've made it, when you get your first death threat? Yeah. yeah. I, got, so I got a few, I got a few as an editor, you know. I'm yeah. really relieved to hear that. that <laughs> <laughs> you know, just me? So. Yeah. I, got, I got a few when I was um, press. Yeah, I got a few, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just try to keep, uh, because I'm not in the forums the way that I used to be, like, mm -hmm. but I sit right next to the guys that are, and as soon as I start to hear them go, and by the way, uh, there are actually some kids here, I can't say what I was about to say, <laughs> but, you know, gosh darn it, like, <laughs> so-and-so fans really making me upset. Like, <laughs> that's usually about that the time. That fan's actually in the room right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> that's usually about the time I try to step in and be like, now, James, yeah. Maybe you should step away from your desk for a moment. And <laughs> let's make sure we think twice before doing the band hammer. You know, it's like... <laughs> I've, I've had to reach out to people, and I always try to keep in mind, like, like you said, if I was saying this publicly, or if I was saying this to a member of the press, or knew that somebody was going to take what I said and maybe post it somewhere else, that's how I look at everything I write. Mm -hmm. It's very that smart. That it's public. 
Yeah. And, um, and that's a way that you kind of keep yourself safe and keep yourself under control. I have, however, written out very, very angry emails and then deleted them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A it's lot. Cathartic. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. I actually don't feel like I'm ever really holding back like that. Um, I kind of, I don't know, I stay a little bit more level-headed where I don't want anything to really bother me too much. And I realize that when we open ourselves up to taking everyone's opinion, you're going to get a lot of opinion. And one important thing I've really picked up on is that a lot of times when they're really irate or kind of really get out there, it's usually more of a method to get the message to someone. Because, you know, being that, that loud vocal minority in some cases, but um, usually that just kind of gets the tension. And they usually aren't really as, up, as upset as they make themselves out to be. Yes. Um, and once you realize that, you can, you can usually work with them and get through it. So a lot of times people are just kind of out there just because that's the way that they can be the person that gets heard. Hmm. And yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like one of my favorite, um, sorry. Were you, oh, well, no, just uh, the only other note, I mean, you know, I, I think that there's maybe only been two or three people that, you yeah. know, actually may have had, you know, be, be people that you kind of should be worried about, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, where you know, kind of get you go, well, they're threatening and, you know, I really don't think they're going to do anything, but Secure. I don't think they're, they're perfectly, you know, there, <laughs> you know, they're not quite right. But, but, uh, but really, I, I think that people are really good, you know, may, maybe I, I give too much credit, but I think that everyone in general is good and that they just, they just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't know how to do it. And, and being loud is the easiest way. <laughs> One of the favorite parts of my job is when we get uh, messages on our voicemail uh, from fans who've called in. And um, yeah, they can get fairly irate sometimes. <laughs> but my, my favorite part, though, is, is, is listening to Matt return the calls. Uh, because he will call up and, and, and just be like, Hello, you called Bethesda Softworks, and they're just so surprised that they actually got somebody on the phone <laughs> yeah. that they immediately mellow out completely. Yeah. Like, yeah. they become normal people, like, immediately. Oh, and it's yeah. great. Just, oh, oh, okay, I, thank I, you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. 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 Totally. Oh, totally. Oh, thank you, sir. Like, oh, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Matt, do you have a mellow phone voice for us that we can hear? Um, normally, it's just uh, the fact that they go on for... Uh, you know, like 10 minutes, and you're just listening, and you're listening. Uh, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Just okay. say the phone number <laughs> slow enough that I can write yeah. it down. Five, four, four, five, 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 five. And then I'm hitting seven on my voicemail yeah. to like rewind. No, I still didn't hear it. Hitting seven again to rewind it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we always typically found that uh, people, basically, if, we, if they sent you an angry, angry email or called you or whatever, if you replied, they were immediately like, oh, uh, okay. You know, like they just kind of wanted to throw it out there and didn't necessarily expect to reply or didn't mm -hmm. necessarily want one. Um, how much do you guys use um, the community to, to kind of manage itself and moderate itself? You know, obviously a lot of forums have, you know, most of the moderators are fans and, and you know, don't officially work for the company. <clears throat> yeah, we don't even actually have moderators yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so far, everybody who's been coming to our site with very little exception, has done a really good job. I've noticed people who post the correct answer in threads and who basically are moderating and we've never actually asked them to. Mm -hmm. It's great. I hope that lasts a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we have a pretty large team of moderators, but we also have a fairly large amount of uh, insomniacs that like to uh, participate as well. I mean, our biggest challenge initially was I had to convince Ted when we first started this that we could even have forums. Like he thought we would give all of our secrets away and that this is the worst idea ever. And you know, over time we've basically evolved to where uh, it's you know like they have like the WWJD bracelets. Like we just have like the WWTD bracelet. <laughs> and if, if Ted wouldn't do it, then you shouldn't either. And uh, it, it generally works itself out really well. The community is fairly self-policing for the most part. And um, you know, rarely do things get out of control. Hmm. Um, I think maybe we should open it up for some questions. Do you guys have anything else you wanted to add or talk about or share? Yeah. All right, let's do some questions. Ray, just raise your hand, I'll call you. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you run the balance between, uh, I guess, running the hype machine, you know, to try to get the, the excitement up over games while at the same time saying absolutely as little as possible beyond what you've been authorized to say? I mean, where do you strike the balance there? Uh, and is that, a, is that an active goal uh, that you, you try to build excitement for the titles that are unreleased? 
Um, I mean, we, we want everybody to be excited about our games, but uh, you know, if, if there's things people want to know, I mean, people want to know everything about the game. And there's a certain point where um, there's things that we want to share, and we, we talk with uh, you know, our PR and marketing about what we want to share, but we also have to talk with development, too, about what, what we want to share and what they want to share. I mean, there could be something that is the coolest thing in the game, and it's what you want to know about the game, but you know, we don't want to spoil it. I mean, you, you don't want to go into the next Batman movie and know everything that, uh, that, uh, that's in the movie, even though it might be on their Facebook page every day right now. But um, <laughs> um, So, yeah. Um, we, we try to put a, you know, the right amount of stuff out that uh, it'll satisfy everybody and, and they'll be impressed by what we're showing. I think there's a lot of trial and error that comes with it over the, over the years in terms of like when you first start out you put out con you know you put out your teasers you put out content you put out uh you know mysterious uh messages or whatever and you can and then you deliver on the goods and you realize maybe i overhyped that uh and mm -hmm. over time you realize what the perfect blend is for that but it doesn't it doesn't happen uh right getting it right the first time so to speak uh is very very uh difficult to do I'm sorry, our dedicated servers and, you know. Well, uh, in, in general for us, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems that the, the way we handle it the best is that we, uh, we take in um, all these different suggestions of what people are looking for, and we find the way to mold each IP <clears throat> to handle a dis kind of distinct market or, you know, kind of desire. So, it, you know, if they're wanting, you know, a, you know, a fast-paced multiplayer game, you know, with dedicated servers, it may not fit a game that we have in production, but we go, you know, we have this other RP that is traditionally for that, and that's what it's good at, and we try to, we try to do what we, you know, do best within that IP. So that's what, how we really direct it. We, we find out how to move each IP forward such that it, it has its own market, it has its, you know, distinct features between our other titles, and uh, that way we have, you know, a kind of a broad, you know, coverage of, of what our games provide to the community. Is there a lot of stuff that, um, that gets added um, after the game is out? Like, do, is, is that mostly based on community, um, community suggestions? Um, a lot of the time it is. I mean, yeah. when we put out Fallout 3, uh, and it's something Todd Howard said ever since, you know, like, they're never going to do an RPG like the, the ones we're doing right now where we're going to make the ending not, an, you know, not being able to play beyond the main quest. So, you know, the immediate reaction was, okay, we're putting out Broken Steel, and this is going to extend the game, mm -hmm. you know, beyond the main quest and let you keep playing and playing and playing. I think just to follow up, too, with your question, it goes back to my last answer, trial and error, in that what happens with feedback, at least what has happened with us at Insomniac, is it's been a bit of a pendulum where uh, after Resistance Fall of Man came out, we heard very loudly and clearly about uh, people wanting uh, co-op. Uh, and we took that so much to heart that we basically focused heavily on a class-based co-op uh, mechanic for R2 uh, because that's what the fans wanted. Uh, but it turns out that a relatively small percentage of the fan base wanted that. The vocal 1% is sort of what we call them. And I think over time you learn how to take that feedback uh, and you, you really learn about filtering and, and, and not just uh, reacting. And I think that's, that's an acquired skill with uh, community management and, and community building in general over time. And, and whether, uh, whether or not um, a feature gets added or not, 
you know, it's definitely something we're paying attention to yeah. and, and making sure that everybody knows about that. Uh, a question over here? Yeah, uh, most of you guys used to be like uh, critics or write about games and stuff like that. And now that you're kind of in like the community manager or PR role, do you find yourself becoming more critical of other PR managers or the way they handle things? Like see stuff that you just want to message them on Twitter and say that was really dumb or anything like that? <laughs> Actually, I think you get more critical of the press. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, because now you're seeing somebody talk about what you're doing and what you're saying, and it's really difficult when you see things get taken out of context or and, and distorted, and you just want to yell, and you're like, I did that job, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like, you just, you just missed one line, and it's really frustrating. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think you get critical, but usually, like, when I'm here and I'm with these guys, I'm learning like we're talking about what we do and these are conversations that I've had with these guys at this convention outside of the panel and it's wonderful because you really get a good chance to talk talk <laughs> <laughs> um, learn from you know everybody else and and so I tend to be less critical of other people doing sort of my job I'm trying to you know trial and error yeah, yeah. and and just to build off that too um, we had you know, James used to be uh, a games journalist uh, roughly the same time as Matt, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we had another guy who's now in project management, but it started off on the community named Brian Intahart. He was a uh, fragile eagle at uh, EGM and Sporto. Yeah, Sporto, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he loves it when people call him that. Uh, <laughs> but with both of them, uh, their eyes were just so opened mm -hmm. up to the world of development once they were let inside uh, that space that I think. Uh, to Abby's point, like it's, you end up being far more critical of uh, journalists that don't do their homework or who, you know, just write, it, you know, really schlock or, or just mm -hmm. speculate after playing, you know, a small percentage of the game. They don't really know what goes into that, and it can be, it, it definitely can be frustrating. But we know they have a hard job. Uh, you know, we have a hard job, and I, I don't, I don't think we. I know I don't, I, I don't, I observe what other people do, but. I don't think it's the kind of industry where uh, anybody goes after people like, hey, that was really dumb. In fact, uh, a buddy of mine and I think a friend of all of ours, uh, you know, Jim Redner, had to go through some tough times uh, recently uh, via Twitter. And, you know, the first thing I did was, you know, email him and give him, you know, my support. So mm -hmm. it's almost quite the opposite. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Good question. Uh, we've looked at them a couple times, and uh, you know, sometimes uh, I've talked to Pete Pete Hines about this a couple times, and we haven't we haven't really taken that avenue, and uh, we we have done some things that were kind of like that. We, at one point on the press end, we sent uh, bring posters out, and they had it was almost like a map with mm -hmm. the different characters, and you were supposed to see how it all kind of went together, and we had an elaborate plan with that, and the way we planned it didn't exactly turn out how we thought it would. Um, and sometimes I think it's just easier to, you know, to spell it out. Here, here it is. Here's Skyrim or, you know, something like that. We did, um, we did an ARG for Resistance 2. We actually worked with uh, the, the same team that did I Love Bees and the, and the Batman campaign, uh, 42 Entertainment. And you know, we learned a lot from that process. Um, it was very. It was two two really different communities. Like the ARG community is a very distinct group that wants to really dive into that rabbit hole, and then the game specific community. I think to Matt's point, they want the info. Like, mm -hmm. what am I going to be playing? Like, I need specifics. Like, what what what's happening that's different from R1? What are you doing R2? But I think they can be complementary to each other. Uh, I wouldn't do an ARG for like like we're launching a new IP uh, with EA called Overstrike and like I wouldn't do I wouldn't do an e, uh, an ARG uh, for that title because we're still establishing what the universe is and trying to invite everybody in. Why make it difficult? Yeah. Uh, I think my two pillars are starting to come out for PC games. Uh, one is like what I don't think we'd tell you if we were. <laughs> I was I was joking around last night though, or the other night. I'm, I am working on a fourth person shooter. <laughs> was it called again? It was called Toby, I believe. Or, yes, or, that's uh, it. Yeah, yeah. It's like Catherine. 
but it's Toby. <laughs> More questions? Yeah. Uh, on the point of uh, when the game shows can take some things out of context, um, as community managers, how do you usually uh, deal with that? Like, do you uh, send an email to the editor or do you uh, kind of do something with like the social network say, they said this, here's what hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll email people. I mean, I know, like, I still know a lot of people in the press, and um, I have no problem saying, Dude, you, you didn't do your job. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I haven't really had to do it often or much because we're not really making any announcements and talking about game-related stuff, but I think it's totally fine to reach out and say, because I had people do it to me. When I was press, I had companies contact me all the time and say, your writer did this, fix it, and yeah. you fix it. That's typically from PR too, more than communi you know, community stuff. Um, but yeah, I've, I've definitely gotten my share of uh, angry emails from, from PR people and stuff. And yeah, you know, and you're like, I didn't even write the story, oh my god. But yeah, exactly. You get it fixed. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll reach out to PR, but at the same time, we'll also you know, be talking to uh, you know, a Todd Howard or a Tim Willits and be say, you know, say, Here, here's what's being said, what do you want uh, mm -hmm. to be said? Or, or they'll come to us first and say, hey, let's clear the air over Twitter or something like that. Yeah, and from Insomniac standpoint, like if it's a Sony IP, then you know we'll go to Sony PR and say, hey, these three facts are wrong. We'll let Sony PR take care of it, and then if for whatever reason, um, you know, the inaccuracies are spreading through social media, then we'll kind of take to the streets uh, and you know make sure that on Twitter and Facebook that we're you know saying here here's the real deal uh, and, and correcting it that way. But we we will always at least defer to the Sony PR team first. You know, that's probably actually a really good, um, to the point we were talking about earlier about how community management has changed. <clears throat> that once that misinformation is out there, whew, yeah. it goes everywhere <laughs> and really fast. Yeah. I've seen it happen with so many games in the last few years. And, yeah. and it's hard to stop. And it's hard to then get everybody's attention again to make them go, like, no, that was, I mean, I've heard stuff about games that, are, that is totally not true. Mm -hmm. And you just, it's like, it filters through Facebook yeah. and through Twitter. And then, and I have people, like, you wonder, like, people will ask you questions. I'm sure, does this happen to you? That oh, yeah. You're like, man, we cleared that up months ago. But people still think that that's true. Yeah, and, and it doesn't matter how many times you point them to an FAQ or anything like that. I mean, I think, you know, another big thing that's changed in our jobs is that, you know, it doesn't, we can show up to work from like, you know, whatever, eight to six, but that doesn't mean really anything. I mean, we're on all the time. I mean, you know, James and I will text at 10 o'clock at night if something's out of control. Uh, and that's, you know, uh, I think one of you guys was asking about the moderators. I mean, th thank goodness for like our moderator community because then they can cover us in Europe in the, you know, dead of night when mm -hmm. something's happening and at least we can be on top of it in the morning. But yeah, our, we're always on, you know, trying to fix this very issue. I, th I think one of the main things, you know, like with, uh, say, our Elder Scrolls titles, we do give out the modding tools, so they'll be able to create the game, um, create the content they want to make. Um, you know, if there's something down the road where, where we have something that is, is have more of a something like Minecraft, maybe we'd implement that more. But, you know, for now, if we're giving the tools for them to do what they want to do, we, we let them go ahead and do that. Go ahead. Well, custom content is a is a difficult, tricky thing to kind of deal with. Um, there are benefits and downsides to like what Notch is doing. Um, one thing is while he can bring content in really easily, it allows him to bring in uh, you know what the community wants, but the community can't own anything that they make for Minecraft. You know, it, it's written in you know, and that anything that they make that a, a custom con you know content's made that they can bring, they own the rights to. And so uh, one thing that we've always done at it is we've, we've tried to let the community maintain some ownership over some of what they create. And, you know, that, that's always changed over time, you know, as we move forward and try to handle, 
you know, custom content. But you know, we like to have you know, map authors and artists be able to create something that they can then uh, kind of use to drive their career a bit. And when, when the developer owns all of it and takes it over, there's, there is some benefit that you can you know, bring it in and expose it to the public, but then it also uh, can hurt the, the modding community as well. So there's a battle there. I guess you also have to consider, uh, you know, with doing console games too, there's a certification process with Sony and Microsoft. If, if we wanted to take every idea that we actually thought was awesome and wanted to add it in, uh, the, the steps of testing that stuff, um, getting it through cert, all that, you know, that's, that's sometimes months at a time to get something new into the game. And, and Minecraft right now has the luxury of, you know, that is a, it's still PC beta and, and, you know, they can add it in overnight if they want to. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, how do you guys deal with, um, like, say, file and tail announcements, announcements where uh, the developers can make a decision and you know yourselves that it will cause a lot of backlash, so let's say um, no mod is going to be PC or a dedicated server, but a game cancellation or something like that? How, how do you guys uh, deal with announcements that are given to you? Um, I mean, sometimes you just have to roll with the punches. I mean, if the decision's been made, um, I mean, I'm not the CEO, I'm not the president. I, you know, I, if there's a decision, we, we want to let the, the fans know the honest answer uh, of what, what's happened, but um, we can't always just make the change afterwards because a petition's gone up or something like that. Yeah, I mean, um, we went through this last year when we announced that we were making multi-platform games for the first time, and you know, we had a pretty dedicated PlayStation 3 following, and you know, a lot of people felt fairly betrayed uh, by us uh, saying we're going to develop for the 360 as well, and we we knew going in uh, what that would be like, uh, so we we made sure that we had a very tailored game plan for how we broke the news. We made sure that it came from Ted. Directly, we made sure that we were all hands on deck uh, from a community uh, standpoint. We told the mods uh, exactly, you know, wh what our position was, and we just made sure that we were accessible. Um, and the last thing that we wanted to do is make, you know, a corporate announcement, a, 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 something that felt uh, either insensitive or insincere. Mm. Uh, you know, it would have to be transparent. And you know, just as, as Matt said, but I definitely think you have to have a game plan and consider all the angles as much as you can. And even when you do that, uh, you, you're always going to get hit with a curveball here and there. And you just, like as Matt said, you got to roll with it. Yeah. Um, one thing, I, one thing about our community that just really, really uh, excites me is how much it's just exploding with new, uh, new sites and new people just getting involved. Um, for somebody that's like a newer community somebody that doesn't really have the you know stature and level of influence in the community that maybe you know you guys do how do you handle uh, developing yourself as a community manager as you move on to your career do you um, do you start off like just focusing just on content and outreach with the community but at the same time just do a little bit of networking with other people and build developing mentoring relationships with them that, you know, with people that are more experienced and, you know, have a lot to offer you. How do you manage that as you move on? What's your focus as you move through your, uh, through your experience in the community as a community manager? I think one, th I, one thing I try to do is, is still maintain, I mean, I don't know if this really answers your question, but is maintain somewhat of your, you know, some of your personality in, when you're interacting with fans. I mean, like, it's it's easy to to sort of slip into that PR role and and kind of and and give very stale answers to people or something. But it's 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 helpful to just kind of be a person and and just you know write blog posts as if you were just yourself yourself yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know I, um, and, and not kind of become a social machine. Uh, I don't. Know. Uh, yeah, oh, you specifically is who I was boss. referring to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good good follow-up. That. <laughs> yeah, that was a good follow-up. Yeah, fine. <laughs> okay. Does that mean I can do yeah, it? I, I, it's about it's about content as much as anything too. I mean, uh, your your networking, your persona, and all that like that will that will come over time. But it, it's really just about being authentic 
in the forums, you know, making, making sure that uh, your passion comes across, making sure that um, when you have something to share that it's really worth uh, sharing. And when you focus on those things, like if, if you're talking about like building your career profile, like all that happens over time. Like I think, I mean, I, th I think James, uh, who works with me closely, has done just a fantastic job of, of that over the years. And it's because he lives and breathes gaming. He lives everything he talks about, he's passionate about, and he's sharing content that should be shared. And when he goes to these conventions, he's, you know, a man of the people, uh, so to speak. He's always, you know, out there uh, meeting the people that he's on, uh, the, you know, online with. So just authenticity, approachability, and uh, sharing compelling content is really a uh, a good trifecta for you. More questions? Yeah. I have two. Yeah, I have two. And, you know, I think back to the point I made earlier, Take everything you say and make sure that it's something that you're comfortable saying in public and you don't mind maybe even your mom reading. Um, I don't believe, like when people write, uh, this doesn't represent my employer. Well, yeah, it does. You know why? Because you do. <laughs> and so I think you have to be really watchful of it. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't want to make game announcements from or anything from my personal, like I'll send it out from there. but. We have our Respawn account. I mean, that's where they should be coming from. Not just do you want to kind of keep some of your personal stuff personal, but just as much you, the community's not really interested, you know, in a lot of your, your daily kind of personal, you know, Twitter or, or Facebook post. And so you want to make sure that you're providing them the information that they want. So you need to keep a personality for yourself. You don't want to become just a, a you know, dry page where you, you, know, you put up your corporate post. But but you definitely want to make sure that the message you're getting across is something that they're interested in, as, as well as it being you know, important content. So, um, you don't I, want to see pictures of my cats? No. <laughs> what, what did Adam have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> Typically, I, I don't. And, <laughs> and so I, I don't have to make a post for that. I had but. watermelon. <laughs> I used to have two Twitter accounts, and I just found it was too much of a pain in the butt. Well, uh, and I actually, I think Google Plus may help solve this one day in terms of like with the circles and being able to tailor who you're talking to and how. I mean, that's what I'm most excited about for uh, Google Plus. I think it could really be helpful there. Chris. Chris. <laughs> Unless it's somebody that I would say is actually my friend, uh, usually, uh, usually I have to just think about it and assess the situation. And sometimes it varies. Um, sometimes I'm just going to limit the access they have to a Facebook account. Um, <laughs> the biggest concern I have normally with social media is when I accidentally uh, post my like, you know, talking about Michigan football from the Bethesda blog Twitter account. <laughs> yeah. Then it's a real quick delete. Yeah. yeah. I keep Sometimes. separate groups also. Sometimes. So, I mean, there's, a pe there's people that are friends on social networks that can't see the majority of what I'm posting or information about me. I try to keep it as separate as possible. I've kind of just made myself a Facebook whore. <laughs> like, I yeah. just, you know, I was just talking about this at dinner last night, and it's like, you know what? Like, I got nothing to hide. Like, if you want to be friends, it's cool. Like, I, I'm treating Facebook almost like a personal brand page at this point. And in general, everything I post, I make sure that it's okay to post. And, you know, it's cool. And in some ways, you know, it's like, I know, like, Mitch and I, have, you know, become friends that way. Uh, and, you know, I met Mitch through uh, our community functions, and, you know, I get to know what's going on in his life. And I, it, it's been great for, you know, developing friendships that might not otherwise have existed. And, you know, if stuff comes up that's personal, like, 
I just, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, this is what's happening in my life. If you, if you want to know about that, cool. And I'm sorry if you don't. Like, I'm just, come and go as you please. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think they're all right. You know, they're, they're, all, they're all good approaches. Um, I, I, I've gotten it through our forums, like through the private messages, or um, sometimes I'm not sure how they got my email, but they get it. Um, James, uh, usually. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thanks, yeah. James. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I've, I've never gotten a call directly. Um, I, you know, I've, I've taken a call that was for the company, and, and then it went that way, but yeah. I was afraid he was going to show off like a uh, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Schneider chest tattoo or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gads. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, as a community manager, how do you deal with game leaks and how do you kind of prepare yourself for that? Just know it's going to happen every time. I mean, it's just you, you prepare yourself in that you, you, you just make sure that when you, you, you try to, if you're going to announce something, you a have to, you always want to make sure that you're accessible immediately thereafter uh, to see what, ha what, what happens. Uh, if you get a leak, uh, that's where having a great moderator network comes in handy if it's in the middle of the night and you can be alerted to that. But, I mean, we all, you have to plan for the fact that nothing is ever going to go uh, according to plan. And when it doesn't, uh, you know, you just you have to kind of roll with the punches. I mean, I think, I think Call of Duty did a heck of a job with that uh, this year. Uh, yeah, they just put they put up the videos right away. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Uh, great, and you just have to have that kind of mentality of, uh, you know, well, you can't fight it. You might as well just figure out how to roll with it and turn, you know, uh, such a you know, what is it? Uh, lemons in a lemonade. Hmm. Any more questions? Yeah, that was that was nice for him to say that, and and uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, those are also giant companies. I think a lot of us have the benefit of not being insanely large. Mm. Yeah, we typically host QuakeCon to try to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we really do love the community, and we try to, um, you know, kind of maintain that peace. And uh, I think that we, we care about the image a lot. Um, you know. Sometimes you can't always do anything about it, but we definitely care. Anyone yes. else? Anyone? No? Going once, twice? Okay. I guess that's it. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Come say hi if you want after. And thanks to everyone for coming.